Hi there and welcome to this month's episode of Beyond the Photo with me, Damien Jackson. In my last video I said I'd be looking at two locations this time, Lismore Castle and Ballysaggart Moor Towers. However, the video turned out to be too long and I've decided to split it into two separate episodes. In this video we'll be looking at Lismore Castle, its history and some suggestions for compositions and lighting to ensure you get the best photographs from your visit here. So thank you for joining me along the journey and let's get started. Lismore Castle was originally built in 1185 when Prince John of England built a castellum or watchtower to guard a crossing over the River Blackwater. At that time a bridge did not exist at the site. When John later became king he handed the castle over to the church and it became a bishop's palace for the next 400 years. In 1589 it was leased and eventually purchased by none other than the infamous Sir Walter Raleigh. Raleigh was a favourite of Queen Elizabeth I and took part in the suppression of rebellion in Ireland. He became a landlord of property stolen from the native Irish. In 1591 he secretly married one of Elizabeth's ladies-in-waiting, for which he and his wife were then sent to the Tower of London for high treason. While he was imprisoned, he sold the castle to Richard Boyle, along with its 42,000 acres in 1602 for £1,500. Boyle was an English politician who served as Lord Treasurer to Ireland. The title, First Earl of Cork, was created for him in 1620. Boyle made Lismore his principal seat in Ireland and transformed the building into a magnificent residence. The castle was attacked during the Cromwellian Wars in 1645 when a force of Catholic Confederates destroyed the castle and the town of Lismore. The castle was acquired by the present-day ancestors of the Cavendish family in 1753 when Lady Charlotte Boyle married the fourth Duke of Devonshire who turned out to be the future Prime Minister of Britain. Their son, the fifth Duke, was responsible for the building of the original bridge across the Blackwater in 1775. The sixth Duke, commonly known as the Bachelor Duke, succeeded his father in 1811 and from 1812 to 1822 transformed the castle into what it is largely today. A new bridge, the current one, was built by the Cavendish family in 1855. Adele Astaire, Fred Astaire's sister, married the ninth Duke, Lord Charles Cavendish, and lived in the castle between 1932 1944. The 12th Duke, Peregrine Andrew Morney Cavendish, no less, succeeded to the title in 2004 and his son and heir Lord Burlington has an apartment in the castle. He manages it and rents it out to groups of up to 23 people. There are 15 bedrooms and 13 bathrooms, a drawing room, two sitting rooms, a dining room and a banquet room that will sit up to 80 people. The castle is totally private and only a contemporary art gallery in the West Wing known as Lismore Arts is open to the public. As you come into Lismore from the Cap Quinn or Dungarvan side, you'll see a top garage on the right. About 50 metres after that, just before you cross the bridge, take a right for Ballyduff. After 50 metres, you'll see the road widens on the right and there's plenty of room for parking. And just to mention, the top garage has a good deli and serve good coffee, so you won't be stuck if you're here for a few hours. Once you've parked the car, walk back to the junction and 
turn right onto the bridge. There's a narrow path, but it is a main road, so it can be busy depending on the time of day. Walk about three quarters of the way across the bridge until you have a good view of the castle and the river. As the path is narrow and other people try to squeeze by, I find it takes up much less room to place one of the legs of your tripod up on the wall. This is the subject that I'm trying to capture. The castle on the left with the river in the foreground. Now it's almost 7.45am in the morning at this stage and the light is starting to get a little too harsh. I'll try a long exposure to smooth the water and try and get some movement in what few clouds are around this morning. You'll need a wide angle lens to photograph the castle from the bridge, but one of the problems is always distortion when you try to go too wide. So I just find rather than take a really wide photograph, you're probably better off to take maybe four photographs vertically and then try stitch them together later. So we'll do that. So I've pre-focused now. And I'm going to turn it on to manual now because otherwise the autofocus is going to hunt once I have the filter on. Just put on, I graduated as well because the sky is obviously much brighter than the remainder. So that's the four photographs done and I'm going to stitch them together later and we'll see how it turns out from there. So as you can see, it's nothing spectacular. It was too late in the morning and there just wasn't enough drama in the sky. However, the plan to reduce distortion by shooting the four photos worked quite well. Despite this morning's poor effort, this is a good location for a composition of the castle. And given the right conditions, you can capture a nice image from this spot. Here are a couple with a little more drama that I captured from here in the past. Moving on to composition two. Go back to where we parked the car. On the opposite side of the road, there's a 50 km per hour speed limit sign to slow the traffic coming from the Valley Duff side. Walk about 10-15 metres past that and you'll notice that the height on the far side of the wall is a lot less and there's a little path leading into the field. Hop over the wall, follow the path and you'll get into the field. If hopping over walls isn't your thing, walk down the road towards Ballyduff for about 150 metres and there's a gate into the same field. Now you could take a shot from anywhere in the field but it's difficult to get some foreground. The river can't be seen in front of the castle as, it, as it's at a lower level. And while the castle square on looks great, I found it just doesn't make a great photo. What we're going to do is walk to the left and head for the bridge that we were on earlier. Walk under the bridge and then check your view of the castle from the archways. I think it is the third one from the Lismore side, but there's only one anyway that will give you a view of the castle from under the bridge. What we're trying to capture here is the castle framed by the arch of the bridge. To capture the arch and the castle, you'll need to place your camera in a vertical or portrait orientation and take around four shots and stitch them together in Lightroom or the editing software of your choice. Now this obviously isn't the image I captured that particular morning but it does show the possibilities at dawn from this location because sunlight comes in from the east and lights up the castle beautifully. If you come back about 150 metres from the bridge into the field, there's a, a more mature tree as you can see on the right of the video here. And on the left end, there's a, a smaller one, it's probably, I don't know, 
15, 20 years old. So you have a couple of choices there on composition. You could include both of them and shoot straight up the middle, um, using them both to frame the um, castle itself. Or you could just move slightly, reach your tripod to the right. And then just use one of the trees on the right hand side to frame it from there. So those are a couple of options from this angle. Now the light was obviously far too harsh this morning, but here are a couple of examples using boat compositions. The first one uses boat trees to frame the castle, and the second uses the mature tree on the right. Now a tip for you, if you're new to long exposure photography, if there's any wind at all, the leaves on the trees will move. So although you might get the nice movement in the clouds that you were looking for, the trees will look blurry. So it's best to take a long exposure to get the movements in the clouds, and another short one without moving the camera to keep the leaves sharp. You can then blend both images together in post-production. If you're not sure how to do that, there are lots of very good tutorials on YouTube and I'll leave a link in the description below. The final two compositions are from the air. A drone is very useful for photographing this location as it enables you to compose an image that takes in the full castle rather than just the front or the side of it, which is really all can be seen from either the field or the bridge. My first suggestion is from just above tree height in the field where we took the last two images. Hover above the tree on the right that was used to frame the last image and use the bridge and the river as converging lead-in lines to the castle. Finally, there's another composition from the opposite side of the castle, which takes in a long stretch of the river and some of Lismore Town. In terms of lighting, I recommend late spring, summer and early autumn as the best time to shoot the castle. You'll get the light on the bridge side and the front of the castle in the early morning and late evening. This screen recording from the photographer's ephemeris is in midsummer. Keep an eye on how the angle of the sun changes from a 5.11am sunrise to a 10.07pm sunset. You can also see the time of day on the timeline just below the map. You'll need to avoid shooting from about 11.30am to late afternoon as you'll be shooting directly into the sun. Unfortunately, as we know, midsummer also means very early mornings and late evenings. In winter, the sun rises and sets behind the castle. So although you might get some dramatic skies, the front and the bridge sides of the castle are in the shade for most of the day. You could possibly try a couple of exposures, one exposing for the sky and the other for the front of the castle, and that might work, but it won't be the same as having the light on the castle. So that's it from me at Lismore Castle. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did I'd appreciate a like or a comment below. My next video will be at Ballysagart Moor Towers. We'll look at the fascinating history and of course the best spots for photographing them. I hope you'll join me for that and until then stay safe and bye for now.